First and foremost, guys, amazing job on season two. Let me tell you, uh, I binged it. It's amazing. You guys did a fantastic job. Now, Dermot, uh, you're new. Your character's new to the season. Yeah. Chat me up about John Carmichael and all of his uh, sinister stuff that he's up to. Yeah, well, John Carmichael is right in the middle of his masterwork, and he uh, he is found at the very beginning of season two. Um, yeah, actually doing a little international cleanup work. Um, uh, Marissa has come in, uh, but then he's he's based in um, rural England, where he's uh, running a spy assassin, all female wolf DNA enhanced uh, spy <laughs> assassin training program. Um, so uh, really what I'm saying is right out of the gate, season two, you get to see how deep the tendrils of uh, the Utrex program run and who's um, on the ground in charge. That's the part I play, John Carmichael. Now, uh, Murray, can you talk to me about the relationship between Carmichael and Wiegler, especially this season, because it's an interesting cat and mouse game that the two play throughout. Yeah, I mean, they have history. Carmichael was one of her trainers when she was just starting out in the program. So they they knew each other a long time ago. And then Marissa has like risen in the ranks and she's had a you know really powerful career. And here they are. And of course, Marissa's suspicion is that Carmichael has been brought in because nobody really believes the version of the story that I tell about how season one wrapped up. Um, so my job is to play real nice and to give all the right answers and uh, to make sure to keep the truth away from him. I mean, your character, both of your characters have fantastic scenes throughout this where you could just see the manipulation working. It's amazing job. Now, uh, you also were the previous nemesis to Hannah last season. Can you talk to me about how the relationship between um, Wiegler and Hannah has evolved and what we should expect from Wiegler now? Well, she's just, she's decided to save this girl. It's like the one positive choice she's ever made in her life. And um, come hell or high water, she's just going to make it happen. And, you know, Hannah makes that very challenging. <laughs> Hannah has some deep trust issues. <laughs> Un unruly teenager. Yeah, she tends to run away from the people trying to help her. Um, so I take some lumps. Now, uh, Dermot, uh, you are in control of Utrecht's operation, which will be explored a lot, in, which is explored a lot in season two. What's the major motivating factor for Carmichael? Carmichael is a company man. You can picture him uh, living with his family, suburban DC, worked at the CIA for 35 years, um, brought up a family. However you want to fill in that blank, what you're looking at is a normal American guy um, who, uh, you know, wants to uh, sustain the status quo as it is where normal American guys are in control. Um, by uh, designing a complex program um, and seeing it through for really more than a decade, uh, 15, 16 years ago, I think is when Hannah emerged from the woods. No, that's now. That's when Hannah was born and the others were dispatched by, um, by Marissa Wiegler. Um, so he finds himself, he's been in the middle of this story the whole time. He just didn't know about Carmichael yet. So he's a normal guy doing a heinous thing. In what ways uh, do you think John is more menacing uh, as, as a rival for Hannah this season? Uh, interesting. You know, some of Hannah 1 and Hannah 2, um, can I be honest, it really still eludes me. Um, but I do know that I, uh, I need Hannah at the Meadows so that I can um, reclaim her as an asset. Um, Hannah, of course, has different idea in mind, and so does Marissa. So we've got sort of those are just the three points that are that are in in uh, conflict with one another. Uh, but for me, the most interesting days of shooting too, which is phenomenal, are the scenes where I'm with both of them, or at least one. I'll settle for either Hannah or Marissa Wiegler in any scene, any day. Um, really exciting in the storyline too, when these points of friction come in contact with each other. They don't seem like a very fractious type of scene, 
Um, but what you detect too, there's so many undercurrents uh, at play in each of these uh, me meetings that um, it, it uh, propels the story. Now, would you get, oh, go ahead, sorry. I was gonna just say, can I speak to that question? Because Absolutely. Carmichael has the power of the whole program behind him. And Marissa, even last season, she was still off on her own sneaky business because nobody was supposed to know that Hannah existed. So she's always trying to like get it done on her own, you know? So yeah. anyway. Yeah, and, and, and if, uh, yeah, if Hannah's the heart of the show, believe me, you know, Beegler is the backbone and the, <laughs> and the, and the, the engine driver. Um, and she's up to, she's at it again, even though maybe her motivations have, uh, if not altered, actually um, switched. Now, the one thing I love about of Marissa, honestly, is that even as a, as a fan and as a viewer, it takes me a while to trust her. And even now, I still don't know if I trust her. So can you talk to me about possibly what was the most surprising development uh, for your character that you were genuinely shocked by in season two? With I know it's a tough question without giving any spoilers away. Yeah. Well, to be totally honest, before I took this part, David sat down and talked me through two seasons. So it wasn't a surprise. I knew where we were going, which allowed me in season one, you know, I had the this whole other life in season one. I had a lover and the, and the stepchild. And um, so because I knew that where Marissa was going was she was gonna become the protector of Hannah, I was able to start laying in, in season one, this desire for happiness, you know, like that longing, which, which didn't work in season one in that context, but now can like play out in season two. She, uh, she kept that picture though, though didn't she? Yes, I did, I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, also, there's also new additions uh, to the cast this season as well with, with, uh, with Jules and, uh, and uh, the other character. Oh, well, I, I have about, Leo and Terry. Um, their yeah. yeah, Clara. Can you talk yes, Clara, there you go, Clara. Can you talk to me about the in interactions with, uh, with them? And how Carmichael might feel about about them as well. Yeah, these are these these are uh, students, trainees, uh, you know, agents uh, of the future that uh, Carmichael's very proud of. I mean, it's genuine. He he feels like he's uh, created something that's going to be useful. You do learn um, why it's going to be useful to him, and what it, you know. In, in other words, he's trying to um, save the future. By, uh, by a few key moves in the present. Uh, so he's really a forward thinker, you know, he's looking to protect his, uh, the status quo where the, you know, the white middle-aged guy in the CIA is, is in charge, the, that the government, the chi man behind the wheel is at the, con you know, is at the control. So that's how he's been trained and brought up and that's how his culture has trained him. He's a man of morals. They're just not the same as somebody who has good morals. <laughs> They are not the same as somebody with good morals. Well, look, you guys uh, did an amazing job. I can't wait for everyone to see season two. Uh, I think it's mind blowing and it kicks off so hard right off, right out of the gates. So uh, I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joseph, especially. Thank you.